Last week, Andrea started one of her most industrious projects to date, building custom kitchen cabinets for our friend's kitchen. After taking measurements and buying all of the materials we would need, I made it most of the way through finishing these cabinet boxes. This week, we'll be finishing off the cabinet boxes and building a custom vent hood. This project is pretty mind-blowing, so welcome to the adventures of my DIY wife and her non-handy husband. We want to take a quick pause to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Leather Honey. Leather Honey is a family owned and operated company based out of West Virginia since 1968. Their American made products are the premier all natural non-toxic solution for all of your leather care needs. Leather Honey can be used on all types of leather and colors. Leather Honey's high quality ingredients help condition, moisturize, and promote flexibility on your car seats, home upholstery, and even your favorite shoes, belt, or purse. I personally have used this on my leather purses and it helps keep them looking brand new. Unlike other products on the market, Leather Honey penetrates into the leather to hydrate each individual fiber, which means just one application can last up to six months. Leather Honey understands the value of quality leather and how important it is to keep it looking like new. With thousands of five-star reviews, customers agree, making it the number one best-selling leather care products on Amazon. Check out all the ways Leather Honey's cleaner and conditioner can help prolong the life of your leather by clicking the link below. All right, it's a new week and it is so windy today. <laughs> We're ready to get everything out of the garage, get our sawhorses set up, get the cabinets out, and get these cabinets finished. All right, so I'm ready to get started on these face frames and I'm gonna build them to where they're flush on both the left and right side and then at the bottom, they'll be flush with this. So the top of my one by two board will be flush with the inside of the bottom shelf, flush with the top so I can put everything together, slide it where it needs to go. I'm using pre-primed one by two since we're gonna be painting everything. This shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> I started by measuring and cutting all of the pre-primed 1x2s that I would use for the face frames on the range wall. Next I added pocket holes on the top and bottom 1x2 since those would attach to my left and right face frame pieces. All right, so I have finished making all the cuts for my upper cabinets on the range wall side. Now I'm gonna assemble them using the pocket holes that I made, wood glue, and I'm gonna clamp them together just to make sure I've got them perfectly, perfectly aligned. After I had my boards glued and clamped together, I screwed them together using one and a quarter inch coarse threaded screws. Okay, work it, work it. Moment of truth, make sure I measured. Right. All right. Look at you, you're a cabinet builder. I really hope like when we put all these in, you know, everything is good. After finishing the first face frame, I repeated this process for the rest of the cabinets on the range wall. To finish off the corner hutch cabinet, I made the main part of the face frame and then laid it out and marked where I needed that last horizontal board to go. Once I finished all of the cabinets on the range wall, I moved on to the cabinets that would go around the refrigerator. I repeated the same process of measuring, making all of my cuts, then doing all of the pocket holes, and then assembling using wood glue, a clamp, and one and a quarter inch screws. Once I had all of my face frames finished, I attached them to the cabinet boxes using wood glue and a brad nail. Once all of the face frames were attached, I used wood filler to fill all of the nail holes. After Andrea finished up the face frames, I felt like it was time for a well-deserved lunch.
How'd I do? After a delicious lunch, it was time to apply more sunscreen and get back to work. Good idea, good idea. Getting hot. I started by sanding down all of the wood filler on the face frames and then moved on to sanding the rest of the cabinets. You done? Yep. Once I finished sanding everything down, I grabbed my leaf blower and blew off all of the extra dust. Feel the power. All right, we are ready to take these cabinet boxes over to their house so we can measure and order the doors. So we're gonna get the seats out of our van, load it up. Hopefully we can fit all of them in one trip, but if not, we might be making two trips. I measured to make sure the largest cabinet was going to fit and it was going to be really close. What? What? Did that see it? Like, get it. Yeah. Said it once, we'll say it a thousand times. You can fit anything in a minivan. After that, we finished loading in the rest of the boxes, making sure that any visible sides of the cabinets were not going to be rubbed or banged on our drive over there. Oh, the final test of glory. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. Yeah! Would you look at this? Would you look at that? It's unbelievable. It's incredible. It DNA movers on the move. When we arrived, we brought all of the cabinet boxes inside and it was so exciting to see them in the actual space. Oh yeah. All right, we have all of the cabinets inside. Next, I need to pull off some of the backsplash, a little piece of the countertop over here so we can make sure all of the cabinets fit. This is like the moment of truth. I'm praying we don't have to make any kind of changes after this part. Smoke detector. Like a glove. Whoa, that's crazy. Thankfully, the biggest cabinet box fit perfectly, and then we moved on to the cabinet over the fridge. Atlas man! I'll just leave him there for a little while. <laughs> Hurry! We're running out of time! My deltoids are burning! Babe, I've already been under here for 47 minutes. Come on. This is like torture. To out more. That's shaking my brain. Oh, mamacita. This is gonna be so close. Uh oh. Oh! <laughs> wow, by the hairs of your chinny chin little chin. After fitting all of the cabinets around the refrigerator, we moved on to the range wall. All right, so we are pausing here for the day because we've got to go pick up our kids from school. And you might be wondering why we actually just brought these in. We didn't actually install them, attach them to the walls. And that is because I really just needed the reassurance that they were going to fit, that we weren't going to run into any problems before we measure and order all of the doors for the kitchen. Everything fits. Praise God. <laughs> now we can go ahead and measure for the doors, build a vent head, and do everything else. A very successful day. <gasps> Yes, oh, it feels good. This looks good. So we wanna take a quick pause right here and just say thank you to everyone who has been watching and following along since we started this just over a year ago. Yeah, I feel like we have the best followers. You guys yeah. are so encouraging in the comments. We don't often get to comment back on all of them, but we read them and your encouragement and just kindness means a lot. And we wanna say here, if you're not subscribed, then feel free to do that. We recently discovered that nearly 70% of our viewers aren't actually subscribed to this channel. So we would love for you to subscribe and join us as we go on more DIY adventures. Let's get back into the project. The next day, Andrea was ready to get started on building a custom vent hood, but first she had to put on a little sunscreen. Like no one's doing this in DIY right now, like showing sunscreen applications. Can like you not? 
now we're outside. See, this story just makes so much more sense when you know how you put on sunscreen before you started on your DIY project. All right, so one of the last things I need to build for these cabinets is our custom vent hood cover. And I'm gonna do this one a little bit different than I've done in the past. And since we're gonna be incorporating some arches elsewhere in the house, I thought it would be fun to have some sort of curved element. But since there are going to be arches within sight of the vent hood, I didn't want my front to arch. So I decided instead to have it be like a regular box where the front of it curves out like this. That's the strength that I needed. My first peach. Peach. I already had my plywood ripped down to the correct depth, which was about 18 inches, and so the next step was to cut the height for the side panels. All right, so I've cut the side pieces of my vent hood and what I need to do now is figure out what kind of curve I want to do. So I've marked up at the top about how far I want it to come out because I know my upper cabinets are gonna come out about 12 inches and I want it the top of my curve to come out a little bit past that. I'm basically gonna be freehanding this and once I get it, what looks good to me, I will just cut it and then I'll trace it onto the next board so that they match up. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Simple. It's elegant. It is. Like you. Ah, thanks. Okay, so next I need to cut a piece of plywood for the bottom of my vent hood, which then later I'll be able to cut the hole in that that the range insert is actually going to attach to. We're gonna use a solid piece of plywood and then I'm gonna use some scrap one by four, some scrap plywood I have to cut pieces for the back of my range and then the front where I'm gonna attach my curved board. Hey, is that my javelin? It is, and I have to cut off the end of it because uh -oh. what happened to it? It got launched into a world record. That's what happened to it. Ugh. No, babe! I need that board! Give me, give me this. No, no, no. All right, so now I'm ready to assemble everything. I'm gonna start by attaching my bottom piece. So I'm using, again, wood glue, pocket holes for everything. Handsome helping hands comes in helpful once again. After getting the bottom and sides of the vent hood attached together, I started adding one by three scraps to the front and the curved portion in the back for support. Once I had all of the supports in place, I measured and cut a piece of quarter inch plywood for the curved front of the vent hood. I attached the quarter inch plywood using wood glue and a lot of screws, which I was sure to countersink a bit so I could fill them in later. After taking a break to add a bit more sunscreen, I cut another piece of quarter inch plywood to cover up the rest of the front. I then attached that with wood glue and a brad nailer. Next, I mixed up some Bondo and used it to cover all of the screw holes and any gaps or cracks or edges so that I would have a nice smooth base before we paint it. Thank you. 
Once the bondo is dried, I sanded it down smooth with 150 grit sandpaper. Y'all done? I think so. I'll have to touch up some, fill in some spots again. Okay, so I've got it mostly sanded. I can already see a couple of little spots I'm gonna need to touch up, but I wanna go ahead and spray a little bit of a primer on it so I can make sure that it's looking smooth enough because I don't wanna get it installed and then spray paint on in the house and go, it's not looking quite right because by that point, it's a little too late. <laughs> All right, so I'm really glad I sprayed that primer on first because what I notice, and this can often happen when you do any kind of repairs is, or patches, is that those repair spots are really smooth, but the rest of it, you'll really see the wood grain. And so I am going to be watering down some drywall compound, brushing that over the entire vent hood, and then letting it dry, sanding it down so I can have a nice, super smooth surface when I paint. Right, what is happening here? <laughs> well, I haven't done this with the pink kind before, and it's it's not mixing as easily, and so I need a little sensory. <laughs> Are you in pre-K? Once I had the drywall compound thoroughly mixed with water, I used a large brush to apply a generous amount. I love the color combo that you have going on. Just kind of the wood on the black on the pink is, is really looking good. Uh -huh. I'm just kidding. I trust you. <laughs> As I finished applying the first coat, the weather was not exactly cooperating with us. Babe, I'm feeling some water drops. Yeah. Yeah, we might need to get inside. <laughs> Look, I'm carrying it. It is sprinkling now. Hopefully the rain will stop and that dries quickly. Then we're gonna sand it down and see if we need another coat. <laughs> After the weather cleared up and the drywall compound dried, I pulled the vent hood back out to give it a thorough sanding with my random orbital sander. If it looks like I'm sanding most of it off, it's because really I am, but the goal is for it to stay in the wood grain and give a nice smooth surface for the paint to apply to. After sanding everything down smooth, the final step was to install the range hood insert. I started by measuring and marking where I wanted the hole and then used a large drill bit to drill holes in each of the corners and my jigsaw to cut out the entire rectangle. Once the hole was cut out, I made sure that the range insert actually fit. All right. Hey, it fits. Yay. All right, so we got the vent hood finished and it's looking a bit of a mess right now, but it is going to look so good once it's painted. And we actually have drywall guys coming next week and we need them to do drywall before we can install and hang all of these. So we are gonna start working on some arches for some arch doorways so they can do the drywall around that. Next week, we'll show you the arches and we'll install all of these cabinets with the vent hood. Well, amazing, amazing job on these cabinets. It's mind blowing to think that you can get some raw materials, you can design something in your mind, draw it out, measure it, and then make custom beautiful cabinets all in our driveway. I mean, this is crazy. And I just have to make a special mention of the vent hood with the subtle curve to it. It's such a beautiful touch. Well done. Yeah, this was definitely a new project for me, but it's so exciting to try something new and then actually succeed at it. And we may have added some extra steps with bringing all the cabinets in before finishing just to make sure they fit because, you know, I didn't want to have any surprises at the last minute. <laughs> but they fit, they're looking so good, and it's just crazy. I say this with every project, but it's so cool to start seeing your vision actually come to life and I cannot wait to see like the new doors, the paint and everything going because 
it's yeah. gonna look good if it it's looks good look when so it's a good. mess like this it's like man it's gonna look so good when it's all finished yeah. so the transformation of this house continues next week as andrea will be arching some of the doorways and taking the next step in transforming this house into an absolutely beautiful space so we'll catch you in the next episode who is your videographer oh man he's good Oh. That thing again, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't know what weighs more, this thing or this thing. Go away! Got ya. Oh, you're making a drink now? See, no one shows this in DIY. That's what people want to see. In our messy kitchen. Hey, this is a nice kitchen. Who designed it? This bathroom's looking pretty nice, by the way. Who designed it? I don't know, man. What are you doing? Hmm? Bitch, you? I have some sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs>